namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Today we are going to have an introduction to a course series that we are doing. And this will be a comprehensive beginner course in Buddhism. We'll be talking about the very basic things, but we will be covering the basic things in uh, great detail. So that's why it's called a comprehensive beginner course in Buddhism. So it will be based on the content that is in this book here. This is uh, called The Handbook of the Buddhists. It's by uh, Venerable Chanda Wimala, and he uh, has uh, quite a number of books in the Sinhala language, and this was translated into English. The English translation is uh, uh, needs some work. And uh, if you can find a copy of the book, it's, it's very good. If you, can, um, if you can locate a copy of it, uh, it might be difficult to do. Uh, it's copyrighted, it's not on the internet, or if it is on the internet, it's not allowed. Uh, it might only be available in Sri Lanka. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it is a, a decent book. And what we are going to do is we are going to follow the, the book content uh, as a general syllabus. So we will be taking the main points and we will be putting uh, the details uh, into Dhamma talks. And uh, there's no copyright on general topics uh, covered in Buddhism. And we will also, uh, in some cases, we'll be uh, generalizing or skipping over some points, and in other cases, we might go into greater detail. So, for instance, uh, we're going to start the, the course off uh, with a talk on Namo Tassa. We'll talk on, uh, the, um, on the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. There are 24 qualities in total. Uh, and we will be covering this according to the Vasudhi Maga. So I've covered this before in some other lessons, but we will be redoing these uh, for this uh, course series. Then we will start with the content of the book. The, the content of the book starts off with Triple Gem, respect towards Triple Gem, then it moves towards uh, you know, Chetyas and relics, and it talks about that, so we can give you some information on that. And, uh, and what is an upasaka? Uh, what is a devotee of, of Buddhism? How, how should you be respectful? We'll, we'll talk um, about, about this, uh, some protocols, etc. cetera. Um, who the monks should associate with, who the monks should not associate with. Uh, this is uh, very important to, to know. And then we will talk about uh, the 10 unwholesome actions, the 10 unwholesome actions, and the uh, 10 uh, uh, wholesome actions or ways of making merit. Uh, so we will be uh, covering those in great detail. Those will cover, of course, the precepts, the five precepts, and we will um, be expanding them and covering the details, and also uh, discussing about uh, kamma and uh, how uh, breaking the precepts has its effects. And we'll be going into great detail. There, are, there is a lot of detail, for instance, on the types of stealing, all the different ways one can steal. Uh, and we will also bring some of the monastic uh, vinya, the, the code of rules, that monks have to follow. So in Buddhism, we have uh, a lot of a lot of rules and a lot of details for the rules, uh, especially with the ones uh, related to the first uh, five precepts. So we can um, we can go into that 
uh, into more detail. And so whether you're uh, a beginner or an advanced student, you will find uh, uh, that you can that you can understand uh, if it's your first time. And if you already know uh, what uh, the uh, what what we're talking about, like the precepts or the ten courses of wholesome and un unwholesome action and uh, and making merit, um, then uh, you you would still find it interesting. And also, it can be a refresher. You can you can literally become refreshed with the uh, new content. You'll be able to learn uh, some more detail and to bring it into your mind. Uh, we will also be covering uh, topics such as uh, some samatha uh, topics. We'll be talking about all the different types of samatha objects. There will be 40, there are 40 con uh, samatha objects that one can choose from. Most people only know about uh, anapana and uh, there are 40 uh, different uh, objects that one can choose from. And uh, so this is uh, very useful to know. We'll also talk about 32 parts uh, in a suva practice, and we'll, we'll go into some details about that. It's not a meditation course, but it's letting you know what's available in the realm of Theravada Buddhism. Lastly, uh, we'll cover um, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Noble Path, and we'll talk uh, in detail about uh, how those, how that is all organized and the groupings of all that. So it should be uh, quite useful for beginners, people who are fresh to Buddhism, and those who are well seasoned and have been around for a while. Uh, it's important uh, to to get this information from from a Theravada monk, from a Theravada monk's perspective, and uh, it's, it's, it's very important because you need to know how to, how to act in front of monks, you need to know how to, how to offer. Uh, this is also uh, very important and it's not really uh, talked about uh, very much. And, and also the, um, the topics that I've, that I've mentioned as well. And we will talk a little bit about uh, about insight meditation, but that can get very, very deep, very quick. So we'll talk a little bit about that, and uh, and that will be it. So if you've heard this before, if you heard some of this information before, again, it's very useful. Please know that the the monks we chant uh, a lot of the same suttas or parittas or. Uh, devotional chants or determinations, we, we chant these nearly every day, sometimes twice a day. And uh, like for instance the Karaniya Metta Sutta, the discourse on loving kindness. So we chant it every day. We don't complain, oh we, we chanted that yesterday or we chanted it earlier today. We don't complain like that. We just, we just uh, know that it's something that we should put in our mind, we should bring back to our memory, and we should reflect on that and bring it to the present moment and set our intentions uh, on that present moment and what we are relearning or bringing to mind again and again and again. So the teachings are actually quite simple, but we need to bring them to mind and we need to uh, remind ourselves and to be following the teachings. And uh, so it's very important, no matter how advanced you are, it's, it's very important to know that. So the name of the book is The Handbook of the Buddhist. It's by Venerable Chanda Wimala. And uh, I don't know if you can find it. Uh, we're going to cover important uh, points from this book. We are going to... We are going to skip over some sections and go into more detail in other sections. So even if you have the book, it's not, it's, uh, not necessarily um, going to match one for one. But it, it will have the general content, the general outline of what we will cover in this uh, Theravada um, 
beginner Buddhist, a comprehensive beginner, uh, beginner course in Buddhism, in Theravada Buddhism. So it's, a, it's very important, Theravada Buddhism as well. What we, will, we will be covering all, all the content as it relates to Theravada Buddhism. And Theravada Buddhism is, uh, is based on the commentaries and the Abhidhamma uh, as it interprets the suttas and the uh, the vinaya as well in some in many cases the commentaries uh, play an important role for the vinaya so it's very important for learning about precepts so uh, these days it's very difficult to find uh, orthodox Theravada teachings uh, online and in English it's very common in, in Sri Lanka and Myanmar uh, it, it's all you'll find, but uh, in in the in the West, uh, you might not be able to find an orthodox uh, interpretation or take or teaching on such uh, simple topics. So we will be uh, covering that in in that perspective. So now, what we are going to do is we're going to start with uh, what does Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase, what does that mean? Let's uh, chant it one more time. We did in the beginning, but let's chant that now. Namo Tase Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambuddhase Namo Tase Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase Namo Tase Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase. So this chant, this uh, small little uh, phrase actually, is said in the beginning of every Dhamma talk. You heard me saying it in the beginning. Uh, you heard me say it again. You've heard other people say uh, this phrase. Other monks say this phrase. Other lay people, lay teachers say this phrase. Maybe if you've done some chanting at home uh, or you've taken five precepts, again, you have also said the Namo Tassa phrase. We use Namo Tassa as an abbreviation uh, for the Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambuddhase. When we give a triple jam and five precepts, Tisarana and Panchasila, when we give uh, these to the lay people, Normally we just say, okay, Namo Tassa. And that means begin, and they start, and they do Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase. So while I'm talking, I'm going to say Namo Tassa. Uh, and sometimes I will say the whole thing uh, as well. I will say the whole phrase, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase. We are going to talk about what it means we're going we're gonna to talk about the basic meaning, the word-by-word -word definitions, and the basic grammar. We're not going to go into uh, great detail, but later we will. There is an overlap between uh, the first three words uh, that we use and uh, the Buddha Nusati, the nine qualities of the Buddha. So we can cover that uh, later. But we're going to have just a, a basic, a general introduction and also to understand the grammar that is involved with uh, this uh, small chant, this, uh, the grammar of the Bali language. And uh, this is what we use in uh, Theravada Buddhism. And uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So we have Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase. My hands automatically uh, ri uh, raise up and they're in what we call the Anjali uh, position because uh, Namo means uh, my reverence to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Self-Enlightened One. So when we, when we chant, we put our hands together like this in reverence uh, to the Buddha. And we say this before every single Dhamma talk, 
before every single tea sarana, before every single paritta chanting. So it's very um, important to do, and we'll, uh, we'll explain uh, what, uh, what this is all about and why we have uh, so much reverence to the Buddha. So, namo tasa, namo means reverence or homage, and you might have heard of the word uh, namaste, namaskara, namasaka. Um, these are relatively uh, the same words. And we have a, a namo, it means reverence or homage, and this word automatically goes out uh, to, an, to an object. And so we have a tassa, namo tassa, the SSA, the sa, is the dative case to denote that it's a dative case. And this means that there is homage uh, to something. What is it? Him. Uh, ta or tassa is to him. So we have namo tassa. It's to him. Who? Who is him? It's capital H, him. This is uh, the Buddha. So it's uh, namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. So now you know that it means uh, homage to him, namo tassa, just that part. Then we have bhagavato. So you might have heard uh, itibiso bhagava. Uh, this is also the same um, uh, base word we could say. And it comes from uh, the bhagavant. The bhagavant is the blessed one. And uh, it also means uh, Bhagavato is also the dative case. It's to the Blessed One. So all these words are actually dative case. And uh, so we say uh, Namo Tassa, my homage to him. Bhagavato, to the Blessed One. So the Visuddhi Maga goes into uh, numerous uh, uh, reasons why the Buddha is called the Blessed One. And there are too many reasons to go through this, but um, the, main, the main reason is he, is, uh, he has gone through samsara uh, and made the determination as a bodhisattva. This is a Buddha to be. And he has improved his parami over what we say for Asankhya and a hundred thousand eons. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he was able to develop his parami and he has the markings of the Buddha. And these markings, these qualities, they don't come from his parents. They come through uh, his development of his qualities. And because of this, sometimes we call him the fortunate one, we call him uh, the lucky one, and we call him the blessed one because he has these uh, wonderful qualities. He's, uh, he's accumulated so much merit. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, as the Buddha, uh, this, uh, uh, we, it's incomparable. So this is very important to know, and we, uh, we just need to know that uh, Bhagavato means the dative case to the blessed one. And again, we have arahato. So this ending is the same, it's the same type of word that, that uh, ends with a, in the same way, bhagavato and arahato. Again, this is dative. And so we have, uh, it comes from the word arahant before we had the bhagavant. So you can understand it's a very similar word in the way it ends and then when we uh, put uh, the ending on it to make it dative, then this becomes uh, arhato. And arhant, uh, arhant means one who has his, his enemies destroyed. He has destroyed uh, his enemies, and the enemies are greed, hatred, and delusion. There's no more rebirth for one who is the arhant. No more rebirth. It cannot come back. The, uh, the, these uh, defilements are destroyed and they, they cannot come back. We normally say it's like a, 
it's like a like a palm tree that has its crown removed uh, once it's removed it does not come back and uh, the arhant does not go anywhere after birth after birth there is no more becoming there is no more birth after uh, he dies after the arhant dies an arhant an arahant is one who's fully enlightened and a Buddha is also fully enlightened. We'll talk about the difference, uh, but uh, a Buddha is also an arahant. A Buddha is also an arahant. But a Buddha, a Samma Sambuddho, is uh, much more special, much more rare to come into the world and normally we Normally we talk about the arhants, we talk about the disciples of the Buddha. Normally we say it like that, but the Buddha is also an arhant. He has destroyed greed, hatred, and delusion. We normally say we have a four, four pairs and eight individuals in terms of those who are enlightened, and we'll uh, go over that uh, further down in the course. Uh, maybe in the middle or near the end we'll We'll cover uh, this, uh, and we'll also cover uh, many more topics as well. But the main thing is that the enemies are greed, hatred, and delusion, or the defilements. They have been permanently destroyed. After death, he doesn't go anywhere. And for that reason, through all that uh, hard work and those great qualities, he is also called the worthy one. So that's also important to know uh, that... Uh, he is the, uh, the worthy one. The Samma Sambuddhasa is the, the self, the perfectly self-enlightened one. And this is referring to a Buddha, a Buddha that we know, the Theravada Buddha, not to be confused with the uh, other forms of Buddha, uh, other forms of Buddhism. Uh, this is the Theravada Buddha because uh, different teachings exist uh, for uh, different uh, styles of Buddhism. So I'm not familiar with these, but uh, um, just to be safe, uh, when I mention the Samma Sambuddho, this is uh, Samma Sambuddha, this is the uh, Theravada Buddha. So the Samma Sambuddho, he is, he is one who has gone through samsara, I said before. Normally we say four asankhya and a hundred thousand eons. What is an asankhya? Sankhya, there are so many different uh, ways to explain it, but uh, in, in, we could say, layman's terms, um, if you can imagine the universe expanding, 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 expanding because of the Big Bang, and then slowly it loses that acceleration and the force of gravity causes everything to pull uh, together again. And then uh, this, would be, uh, this would be one of the, uh, one of the cycles of uh, Asankhya. It's uh, uncountable. It's an uncountable length of time. There are many other uh, similes uh, but uh, and metaphors, uh, but uh, the main thing is to know that it's an uncountable and unimaginable uh, amount of time. And so we call it Big Bangs, four Big Bangs, uh, we could say. But it's much, much longer than that. So uh, if, if you can imagine how long that is, know that it's longer. So again, the Samma Sambuddhasa is the same type of uh, word as a tassa. So you see that buddhasa and tassa, they sort of end and they sound the same. And this is also the same uh, type of word. And uh, this is the dative case uh, to uh, the uh, word samma sambuddhasa, samma sambuddho, samma sambuddha. So we can uh, say like that. So it means, uh, it, it means that we give homage to the Samma Sambuddho. We give homage to the 
perfectly self-enlightened. Now, what do we call, what is so special about one who can uh, become enlightened through teachings and one who can discover the teachings? So it doesn't really work like this, but it's a close, uh, it's a good example to sort of understand about the, the mind and the power to be able to uh, figure things out and how much uh, personal power, we could say parami or past life abilities, in order to be able to figure out the teachings and to discover the teachings and then be able to, uh, to, be able to teach other people. There are different types of Buddhas and some Buddhas, they don't uh, teach. They are called private Buddhas. We, sometimes we call them private Buddhas, Pachika Buddha. But uh, uh, Samma Sambuddhasa, they, uh, specifically, uh, they specifically made the determination so that they could become a Buddha and they could teach for, uh, out of compassionate for all beings in the world. So we have uh, Einstein. Einstein, we could say, is someone who discovered teachings. He didn't create teachings. He didn't um, create any teachings with magical powers or anything like that, or any laws. Uh, he discovered the laws of physics and uh, that were unknown at the time. And uh, he, he taught them to other people. And other people are able to understand these teachings. Uh, we can't, you know, I don't have a degree in, in physics, uh, so, I mean, I know a little bit about uh, Einstein's uh, teachings, but um, let's suppose uh, we have people who have a, an undergraduate degree in physics, we have people who have a master's degree in physics, and then we have the PhD uh, degree in the physics who, again, go on to teaching. So, the, the PhD, we could say, is the Arhant disciple of Einstein. So they go to uh, very um, high levels of mastery of the teachings and, uh, and then they become, let's say, a professor and they teach. Of course, real PhDs would also uh, continually uh, try to discover new teachings as well. That's where the metaphor sort of uh, uh, breaks a little bit. But in the general sense, you can understand that there are physicists, there are uh, rare physicists who come into the world who are able to discover these new laws of physics and they're very special people. Other people can learn the teachings that they discovered, but they don't have that capacity to discover the teachings. And so uh, the Buddha, the Buddha uh, through his long, long training, unimaginable length of training, he is uh, able to discover the teachings and the Arahant is able to learn and develop and fully comprehend the teachings to the highest level. The Samma Sambuddhasa, the Samma Sambuddho, he is an Arahant. An Arahant is an Arahant. So uh, the difference between the two, after death, there is no difference. There is no difference when an Arahant dies and when the then when the Buddha dies, there is no difference at all. There is no difference at all. And, uh, but uh, there is a huge difference in the personal power of the Buddha. The Buddha, is, uh, he has uh, so many knowledges developed uh, to the fullest extent that uh, is incomparable to any other being. Uh, including his uh, chief disciples. It, it, they don't even come close. And so it's very rare in the world for a Samma Sambuddhasa. I feel like I have to put my hands together when I say it because it's, it's very rare in the world for us to encounter or even hear the word Buddha. We're very lucky, very lucky to hear uh, this, this word. And what more can we say about hearing the teachings of the Buddha? And uh, for myself to be a monk and to be a bhikkhu and to be able to practice full time uh, the teachings of the Buddha, it's a very special, it's a very uh, wonderful thing. And when we, when we give a homage to the Buddha, 
uh, it's very important because it's uh, so rare. We have we have chants about how it's uh, how the teachings are are rare. The Buddha to come into the world. We have this Dula Bob uh, chant that we we chant uh, every day, nearly every day. It depends on our schedule, and uh, it's uh, it's very rare. And we we need to be reminded of that. And the Buddha himself actually gave this Dhamma talk every day as well. And uh, so it's something we should chant every day. Some of these teachings, they might be uh, repetitive to you. They might be, uh, you, know, you know what namo tassa means, you know what some of the basic uh, teachings are that are going to come in through the Course. But the main thing about uh, Buddhism is keeping the teachings in the mind and reminding yourself, uh, reminding yourself what you're supposed to do and uh, that you're supposed to be doing it and that's what's uh, important. So uh, this is uh, one of my friends, uh, one of my friends uh, who, uh, who went to ITBMU. Uh, he has a degree in, in, I think, in Pali or Sanskrit. And uh, in order to get a master's degree, he had to start from the very bottom level. Uh, and he had to go through the diploma. He had to go through the diploma course where they were teaching uh, Buddhism from the from the very basic level with no experience necessary and I asked him I said why are you here what are you doing what 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 use is this for you and they have six hours of classes I think nearly six hours of classes per day and uh, he says you know he says he, he called me a wuso I think at that time he says you know wuso it's like we ha we have we have to study a little bit because we have to remind ourselves because we have to make it fresh in our mind for the exams. But uh, we're in the class and we're just getting dhamma talks. We're focusing our mind on the dhamma, and uh, we're keeping our mind wholesome. And so it's not a waste of time. And so this is uh, very important to understand that when you hear uh, a teaching uh, that you've heard before. Um, not to go, oh, no, I've heard this before, and uh, well, this is wasting my time, I'm going to skip forward or whatever, or uh, go somewhere else. Um, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't work like that in Buddhism. Uh, for instance, we, you know, I said we chant the Dula Bo chant nearly every day. We chant loving kindness. We chant, uh, uh, we, we chant, we chant the, the qualities of the Buddha every day, for sure. And uh, if, if we're chanting or something like that, but... The, uh, nearly every day we chant this multiple times per day. Many times we do multiple times per day. For instance, the discourse on loving kindness. So, what you only need to you only need to chant uh, loving kindness uh, until you know it, and then you can forget about it. Or uh, you uh, you can chant it uh, once a week. What do you do? Do you complain? Oh, we chanted loving kindness. <laughs> We practiced loving kindness yesterday. We practiced loving kindness an hour ago. So it, it's something that we should always have in our mind. And uh, this is why the, the monk life, we have many repetitions. And uh, the Mahatera of the organization of, uh, we, we call it the Sri Kalyana Yoga Shrama, the Mahatera, he's, he's uh, passed away. But he has chanted the uh, Buddha Nusati, the uh, nine qualities of the Buddha, over a million times. And so, uh, uh, why? If he, if he knows it, why does he, why does he chant it again and again and again? Because he knows the, the, the value of, of that and to keep the mind focused. And he was very focused. And so, uh, when you hear teachings, uh, it's very important to understand, oh, I'm just I'm keeping my mind, I'm reminding myself. And, and uh, so it's very important to uh, know uh, that while you're listening to things, that you're bringing uh, things again and again and again into mind. So that's a very important. So we covered uh, the dative of tasa. We've covered the dative of samma sambuddhasa. So I'm grouping these in order of the in the in the group of the form of the word. So we say namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa, and uh, so I'm putting tassa and samma sambuddhasa together next to each other so you can see tassa samma sambuddhasa, 
And we have the, the dative case of Bhagavato and Arhato. So, uh, so we have those uh, together, they're all dative cases. And we say Namo to him, Namo to the Blessed One, Namo to the Arhant, the Worthy One, and Namo to the, the Buddha, the perfectly self-enlightened one. And so we say uh, namo, namo uh, tassa, namo, uh, namo to him, namo to the Bhagavant, namo to the Arhant, and namo to the Sammasambuddha or Sammasambuddha. So we, we, uh, we can slowly try to understand that the namo gets paired with each word. Which each, with each of the four words together, it means my respect, my respect to him, my respect to the Blessed One, my respect to the Arhant, and my respect to uh, the Buddha, the Sammasambuddha. So let's uh, chant uh, one more time. We can try to understand the meaning and the grammar and uh, the word by word. Uh, meaning and grammar of what we are chanting. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase. So today, now you understand what uh, Namo Tassa is, and uh, this is the uh, beginning class of the the beginning uh, lecture of the lecture series uh, on uh, the comprehensive beginner course in Buddhism, and uh, so uh, this is the proper way to start uh, any lecture. But since we're explaining uh, the basics, but in a more detailed way, uh, this is the proper first lesson that we can be giving you. So I hope that you can uh, understand now what everyone is saying when they say Namo Tassa. You can understand that it's the, it's the most uh, widely chanted phrase in, in Theravada Buddhism. And uh, you can understand that we need to give respect to the Buddha. And you've also learned uh, three qualities of the Buddha in very brief, the Bhagava, the Arha, the Arhato, and the Arhant, and the Sammasambuddho. Uh, so these uh, three qualities we can learn, these are part of the nine qualities of the Buddha, which we will cover uh, next. So. I hope that you can understand the Pali uh, that has been told, taught to you, uh, that has been spoken to you uh, in more of a detailed uh, manner and uh, also in a meaningful manner so that when you listen to uh, the Dhamma talks, when you listen to Paritta chanting, when you take a Tisarana, you understand and bring into your mind in a more powerful way. And by by bringing that into your mind in a more powerful way, you can have a wholesome mind coupled with wisdom. And when you have that mind that's uh, wholesome and coupled with wisdom, you'll have a calm mind that is ready to take in the uh, teachings, the, we could say the Vipassana teachings, that you can uh, get the lecture and you can understand the Dhamma and you can put the Dhamma into practice again and again and again so that you may reach Nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.